Hi, I'm Nick Williams, product specialist here at Multilink, and today we're going to be going over how to install an HIP field installable connector. Here are the tools that you need to properly terminate Multilink's HIP field installable connector. A three hole fiber optic stripper, wire and Kevlar cutting shears, fiber optic drop cable slitter, either a pocket cleaver or a high precision cleaver, a visual fault locator, and always when working with fiber, fiber wipes. Sometimes you will need to use a crimp tool or pliers. Here are the components that make up Multilink's HIP compression fitting field installable connector, accompanied by this plastic template that Multilink provides in order to ease the installation process. And as always when working with fiber, you want to have something to mark the cable with. Before stripping the cable, you want to place the compression nut, the compression boot, as well as the housing assembly onto the cable, followed by the two ear crimp. To ensure that you have prepped the proper amount of cable for the connector, we suggest about five to six inches of cable length. A good reference point is the width of the multi-link template. Now, what we want to do is we want to slit the outer jacketing of the fiber. Now we peel it off of the central strength members. And what we want to do is we want to cut away the outer jacketing and the central strength members. Here I'm using pliers as pliers keep it more uniform and the flatter and more uniform all of that fiber prep is, the easier and more efficient the install will be. So here I'm cutting away the central strength members, making sure that the central strength members are as flush as possible with the jacketing. So now we go to the template, and what you wanna do is you wanna measure how much three millimeter buffer tubing you wanna leave on the fiber. Once you have marked the buffer tube, you want to strip away all of the excess tubing. Now, grab your Kevlar cutting shears and remove the aramid yarn inside of the fiber. Going back to our template, now it's time to prepare the right amount of 900 micron. So beyond the three millimeter tubing, we wanna be sure to mark off 19 millimeters of 900 micron cable. Once complete, you wanna strip away the excess 900 micron buffer tube. Now, by starting at the end and working your way towards the base, it alleviates some of the stress on the fiber making it less likely that you'll break the fiber in the process. Once you have stripped away all of the 900 micron, now you want to strip away the clear coating of the fiber. This should be the 125 micron on your three hole fiber stripper. Before every fiber cleave, you want to be sure to clean the fiber with either an alcohol wipe or a designated fiber cleaning product. In this segment, we'll be using a high precision cleaver to complete the cleave. However, you can use what we call a pocket cleaver. Either way, you want to cleave 17 millimeters of 125 micron bare fiber. This is achieved by simply placing the edge of the 900 micron on the prepared fiber on the 17 millimeter mark on the cleaver. Now that cable preparation is complete, you want to grab your template, your connector, and your connector boot. Place the compression boot of the SC-APC connector onto the fiber. Now place the connector inside of step 2 on the template. 
Slide the prepared fiber inside of the connector and once seated properly, press the compression boot onto the connector. After you've terminated the cable, be sure to use a visual fault locator to ensure that the fiber was properly seated within the connector. You'll be able to tell if it was properly seated if the light that appears in the window is dim. If the window appears to be bright when checking with the VFL, you can redo this process up to five times. Simply take the retainer clip that comes with the connector, compress it into the back of the connector, and this will pop open the window. Carefully slide the fiber back out of the connector and reform. By installing the fiber into the connector while using a VFL, you'll be able to ensure that you properly seat the fiber. As stated earlier, the window will remain bright if there is no connection. So, if you're using the VFL while terminating the fiber, you'll be able to notice the difference between a bright window and a dim window. This will leave you a sense of security in knowing that you have properly seated the fiber within the connector. Now that the termination is complete, you want to slide the two ear crimp ring up to the front of the cable. Line up the connector and the crimp ear in step three of the template. Be sure that all parts are aligned exactly as the template outlines to ensure that everything is spaced out evenly and appropriately. Gently crimp down the first side of the crimp ring. Flip over the cable and repeat that step. Now that the cable is crimped down and the fiber is terminated, we want to be sure to take the collar clamps and place them on either side of the cable. Once both collar clamps are in place, be sure to slide the inner collar groove over the connector and snap it in place. This is what we call the internal housing. Once the internal housing is complete, you want to slide the external housing up to the base of the cable. At this point in the process, you want to be sure to align the external housing assembly arrow with the inner collar groove. You will feel it snap into place. Slide the compression boot underneath the teeth on the bottom of the external housing. Slide up the connector nut and tighten it down. Now you have completed Multilink's HIP Field Installable Hardened Connector. For more information on our products, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit our website.